Hi, Julia Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. I hope you had a chance to see my Give Thanks video that introduced my new stencil line, my cookie stencil line. It's called the Prettier Plaque Series. I'm super excited about it, and I've got another video today that's going to show you yet another stencil set in that line. I also hope some of you have had a chance to try my stencils and love them as much as I do. I would certainly welcome any feedback on any of the products that you've tried on the StencilEase.com site, which is where you can find my new product line. So today I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite stencils in the line, which is the Noel stencil, looking gorgeous here, both with a full background exposure, which I showed in great detail in my Give Thanks video, how to create a full background exposure. In this video, I'm going to be showing you specifically how to create a twist on that by creating a partial background exposure with the same stencil set. So lots of versatility in these sets as well. But before we get to that, let's talk about what we need for this particular project. It's not a whole bunch of stuff. You will, of course, need my Noel stencil set, which comes in a package that looks something like this. And in it, you will find all of my Prettier Plaque series consist of four stencils and one masking piece. And those four stencils are a background piece, which is typically pretty elaborate. Here it's the fur and pine cone pattern. The second stencil is the message, the frame that goes around the message, the shading stencil, which creates shading effects in and around the message. It's simply the negative piece that's left over after the masking piece is cut out of it. You'll need two cookies, completely iced and thoroughly dried. You want them dried so that when we apply pressure during the stenciling process, you don't crack them. You'll also need stencil frames, aka, aka stencil genie, to hold the stencils in place. I also often weight down my stencils additionally, the edge of the frame with wood blocks and smaller areas like the masking piece with magnets or smaller weights. This will be a two color project, just brown and green airbrush colors, but make sure you're working with airbrush coloring. Normal food coloring used for coloring royal icing is too thick and can quickly clog your airbrush. You'll need a good airbrush. I have ones that I'd love to work with and I'll be talking in another video about my preferred airbrush and its care and use. But for now, we're just working with a Badger airbrush, which is my standby. You'll need a receptacle for capturing spent food coloring and also airbrush cleaner, which is what's in this big bottle for keeping your airbrush happy and healthy. You'll also need some painter's tape for creating the partial background. You can often mask off a background with another edge, a straight edge of another stencil, but since I'm masking off a fairly irregular line on this stencil, I'm gonna be masking with painter's tape. It allows me a little more flexibility. It also lifts more easily from the stencil without damaging the stencil. So I'm back and ready to airbrush, beginning with the background stencil and the masking piece. Before I start spraying, though, I wanna just make sure I've got a backdrop set up and my counter's protected with paper towel. I like to spray on paper towel simply because it's more absorbent, so I won't get a lot of pooled up airbrush coloring everywhere. Now, before we start stenciling, it's always nice to do a test run on paper to try out both the colors and also the positioning of the stencils. Here I'm going for a partial background that may look something like this, but more importantly, I was testing the colors. I didn't want a super bright green, so I mixed some brown and green here to dull it down. And just as I tested on paper, I'm also gonna be testing those colors once again on my paper towel before I start spraying. Now, but before I do that, just a, a word, here's my background stencil. It's secured in the stencil genie. I like to orient it so that the thinner part of the genie, you'll notice this is thicker and this is thinner is facing down. That way it sits sort of suspended on my cookies without touching the counter. There's a little gap here. And that causes the stencil to sit flatter on the cookie surface. It's just sort of hanging off the cookie, if you will. Now, if I were to do a full background, like on this cookie, a fully airbrushed background, I would simply start like this, put my masking stencil in the center, weight it down with some smaller magnets wherever I want my message to go, and start airbrushing. But as I said, we are going to show a spin on that since I showed basically how to do that in my Give Thanks video. I'm gonna show you how to get a partial background out of the same stencil. I, what I wanna capture is basically this bottom area of the stencil. So I'm gonna mask, I, I could lay another stencil on top here, but it's a, a really irregular pattern that I'm masking out. It's not a straight line. So I'm gonna take little pieces of blue tape and just cover off the parts of the stencil that I don't wanna show. Now my message is going to go here, about here. So I probably want to mask out part of that pine cone here and then down here. 
I'm not masking too much under where the message is going to go because I want that message, this blocking stencil, the masking piece to sit as flat as possible. And if I put too much tape under there, it'll be a little uneven. I'm weighting down my masking piece, which is roughly centered. You don't have to put your message dead center in cookies. You have the flexibility of putting it anywhere. And I think that looks pretty good. My stencil's lying very flat everywhere, except possibly here. That might be an area that I need to press down with a trussing needle when I start stenciling so it lays as flat as possible. So we've got that situated. I think my mask is relatively straight. And now it's ready, time to apply food coloring. I like to work from light to dark colors so that I don't have to clean between colors as much. And I'm working with a green. So I, again, I'm just going to get pattern on the bottom half of the cookie here, trying to avoid this area that I didn't ma Well, I might want to get this little leaf up here. That might be kind of interesting. This exposed there, but I definitely don't want to work up there. I think I'm probably good with the green, so I'm ready to add the brown. And I don't have much green left. The cup's almost empty. So I'm just going to add some brown directly to the cup and shoot it until it comes out before I put it on my cookie. Again, same method, very close to the pine cones, an inch or two away, so I'm just focused on those areas and not going too much over the green I just did. I'll get a little bit of blending with the green, but that'll look kind of nice. And I think that looks pretty good. So let's see what that looks like. I do tend to give it a little bit of drying time so that I don't potentially smudge anything, but that usually is seconds. I can lift off, slide the masking piece, in this case, to the side, and then I'll roll this off to the side so that I don't jiggle it. And I've got my partial background nicely stenciled. So the next step is completely optional, and it makes use of my shading stencil, which, reminder, is just what's left over after the masking piece is punched out. But it allows for some nice, subtle shading effects around the message area. So all of this little subtle brown around this message area here was created by spraying along the edge of the shading stencil. By contrast, I didn't use the shading stencil on this cookie, so you just have the background, the message, and the frame without any soft brown in the center. And it creates a crisper look without it. It creates, I think, a more vintage look with it. Using it again with airbrush coloring today, you can also create shading effects, which we'll do in another video, by brushing on dry petal dust or luster dust with a dry brush. So for this piece, I don't typically use the Genie. I just feel like I don't need it. And it, so I just use smaller weights to weight this down. It also weights down really close to the edge of what I'm trying to stencil. So I, I think it allows the stencil to lie a little flatter than the Genie actually does in this particular case. And I'm going to just do a real light touch around the edges. So it's going to be kind of speckly, but I like that look. If I were to go over it again or more closely or pull back on the trigger further, it'd be a lot less speckly, but I don't really want that. And that's it. Magnets off. Now the next step is onto the frame. I'm going to keep this very simple brown and green dual tone effect. I think it's really elegant, but you could swap in another color at this point. This looks great with a red frame, for instance, as well. But I am going to just go ahead and do this. Now, if I were going to do the frame with royal icing, if I wanted it to sit up off the cookie a little bit, I'd want to apply this in the last step and apply the message first. If you apply royal icing in anything but the last step, the other stencils that you have to lay on next won't sit flat and you'll get some underspray. Conversely, if I wanted the message to be done in royal icing, I would do it last. In this case, I'm going to use airbrushing all the way through, so the order of operations doesn't matter as much. So I'm centering this as best I can. The, I use a 10 mil food grade mylar for my stencils, so they're not as clear as some of the others, but they're a heck of a lot more durable, but they're certainly 
certainly cl clear enough to look through and make sure everything's centered. There's no problem whatsoever with that. And I'm just going to shoot this now more heavily with brown coloring, so there's a real distinction from that shaded area I just did. For lines and both stripes and, and frames that are lined, I like to spray along the grain as opposed to side to side. I think this leads to less underspray, so I'm spraying along the length as opposed to crosswise. I'll take the magnets off one by one and then kind of roll this off. Whenever I can roll the stencil off, keeping a finger anchored on the cookie, I think it leads to less potential smearing of any undry coloring on the top of the cookie. Last and final stenciling step is applying the message. So this is the fourth stencil we've used so far on the set, and I'm just going to center it simply here. Again, weighting it down as much as I can. You don't want the weights on top of the areas you're trying to stencil, but you want them close enough that they keep it super flat. And I think that looks great. My coloring is beating up a little bit. I do want to give it one more coat so it's as dark as my frame was. So I'm just going to let it dry a little bit before I go over it one more time. No, not a long time. Ta-da. Hey, that looks beautiful just as it is, but I'm a more is more person, as I say in almost all of my videos, so I'm going to embellish it further. I'm going to clean up my airbrush station and put a few doodads on it, and also talk about one other style variation that's possible with this particular set. So before I put those doodads on, just a note on cleaning the stencils, particularly when they're taped. I run them under low flow water, just gently so that you don't damage the stencil. You can also soak them in a tub of water. And in the process of doing that, you'll notice that the tape begins to lift and it just peels off really easily without any pulling or tugging on the stencil. And that's why I use the painter's tape. If you were to use almost any other tape, it would lift these tiny pieces and damage the stencil. I could have let it soak a little bit longer there, but still it's perfectly flat. You just don't want to lift up any parts of the stencil. That being said, to dry it, I also dry it flat and pat it dry with an up and down motion. I don't scrub side to side. I don't lift it up and do this. You know, that's taboo because you'll most certainly damage your stencils that way. And that's uh, usually enough to make it ready for next use. You just want to make sure there's no water on it before you set it on your next cookie because you can potentially dissolve the icing. So she looks beautiful just as she is, but I am going to embellish her much the way I did this one with a little bit of a wafer paper bow and a royal icing transfer. This is a stamped piece of wafer paper. I rubber stamped it and then cut it into strips and then shaped it into a bow. I have other videos that address how I do that as well as the royal icing transfers. I think they make a nice little subtle garnish and to apply them, but the cookie absolutely doesn't need it. But to apply them, I just use a little thick royal icing, white, so it blends into the background of the cookie. I think I'm going to put it towards the bottom, so bottom weights the cookie and doesn't look so top heavy. And I'll cover the intersection with my bead. I think that looks great. So before we break, I want to talk about one other design option that's possible. I mentioned how versatile these stencils were. Just by swapping the order of operations, you can create a very different look. So here, for example, I used a full background. I started by airbrushing the background with both the green and a little bit of brown in these outer areas, but I didn't apply any brown to these pine cones. Then I went ahead and I airbrushed everything else, and in the very last step I came back again with a background stencil, centered it where I had it before, and then applied royal icing to these four, four or five pine cones here to create a little bit of dimension. I don't know if you can see that, but they're actually lifted off the cookie, and it just, it just uh, creates a sense of depth, as if these pine cones are in the foreground and the others are in the background. Of course, I also trimmed it with a little brown dot work. So lots of ways to use the stencil, but again here the royal icing use was done in the last step. I hope you enjoyed my Noel set as much as I love it, but the stenciling doesn't end with this set. I've got a host of other Christmas and New Year stencils just waiting for you on stencilease.com. So I encourage you to jump on over there and check out my new product line. 
Till next video, live sweetly and have a wonderful holiday season.